but today we're going to take a quick look at zero thickness geometry. Uh, we're going to look at what it is, what SOLIDWORKS really cares about when you get that error, and then how to get around it if you happen to need to have geometry that might conflict with this particular rule that throws the zero thickness geometry error. So to start with, we've got four separate bodies. We've got the primary body and then three additional bodies that we're going to incorporate into that as we go through here. So first off, zero thickness geometry is tied to a rule inside of SOLIDWORKS where a edge can have two adjacent faces to it. So this particular corner has those two faces next to it. And that is all an edge can have. It can't have more, it can't have less. So in this initial instance, this edge having zero thickness geometry will result in four faces from the two different bodies. So to fix this, we can come into our sketch. And the first thing we're gonna look at is just completely detaching our sketch from the point where our zero thickness geometry is going to occur. We can then come in and apply a offset. Doesn't need to be in both axes in the, the sketch, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to do it in both axes. We can accept that equation. And then once we have all that applied, we can come in and apply a 10,000th of an inch. I'm using a 10,000th of an inch because as you can see, our dimensions are only to two places of precision. So I'm going to make my offset four decimal places out so that it shouldn't have any impact on the final product, whether it be machine, 3D printed, or whatever manufacturing method you might use to create this part. We can go ahead and accept that and we can exit the sketch, come into our extrude, reselect merge result, and we've reduced our body count down to three. The next one we have is going to be a tangency issue. As you can see, we have a round edge and a face, and that is obviously going to again create a single edge with four faces, which we can't have. In this case, we're going to do an extrude as a way to circumvent this. Again, we're going to use a small size extrude. Uh, we're going to apply all of our relations first so that we can more easily generate this. We can put that on the midpoint because I know that I set that up that way. But you could also have it tied to the arc point. And again, we're going to come in and use a 10,000th of an inch exit sketch. And we're going to do an extrude boss base. In this case, we're going to just do up to surface, accept it which puts us into a new issue with appearances. So we can come out and look at this and see that our body has been joined, but that top face, because of how we did our extrude, we're gonna have an issue if we need to maintain our appearances. So the best way to fix this is to then come in additionally with a split line. Uh, we could do a sketch of a line. We could potentially uh, try and do a convert entities. And split line doesn't need a straight line to function. It just in this case happens to be the easiest option. And we just select our face, accept that. And now we have two separate faces. So if I come back out to a isometric view, I can grab this face, copy my appearance, come to this, and we can do a quick paste. And we have our original design intent maintained while having 
one less body in our part. Moving on to the last piece, we have a point connection, which is going to actually have zero thickness geometry created on every axis, basically. There's going to be one along the X, Y, and Z axis, where we would have too many faces along a shared edge. So to deal with this, for a little bit of variation, we're going to use a revolved boss base. We can go ahead and create this relatively quickly. And a good thing to always put into your revolve features is a construction line so that you don't have to go and define your axis of revolution. We can apply this, accept our dimension, exit sketch. And our axis of revolution is already defined, so we don't have to take the time to zoom in and select that line on our own. And now you can see we've managed to incorporate all of our bodies into a single model and single body while we still have maintained our design intent both dimensionally and visually through our appearances. So I hope this helps you if you ever have to actually utilize zero thickness geometry or work around it.